you're the uh, producer for Robinson. Yeah, I'm the executive producer on Robinson the Journey. And right now you're working out of uh, Germany. Yeah, I'm, I live in Frankfurt, Germany. Uh, I've lived there for two and a half years, and I like it a lot. Tell me about Robinson. So uh, Robinson, the, Robinson is a, a game that's a would be considered an ex exploration adventure uh, survival game, if you will. And it's about a boy who gets shipwrecked on a planet, and he's surrounded by dinosaurs, and he has a snarky English robot that uh, drives him through the story. That's, and remember 1960s, 1970s, all the uh, comic books that were coming out showed uh, dinosaurs on alien plants. And this right. is just, this is just uh, uh, bringing it all back. We feel like we have a responsibility to do that. <laughs> Elijah, how long have you been making games? Oh, uh, let's see, about 18 plus years now. And where did you, how did you get started in this whole business? Um, so I was originally uh, in, uh, formally educated as a uh, artist, and uh, I uh, started working in you know um, more uh, technical uh, areas. Like, where'd, you, uh, where'd you go to school? Uh, I went to in in the Arizona. I went to Pima College. Okay. Yeah, and uh, so at. From that, uh, we I started working in like I was asked by my professors to work in labs and stuff like that, and I started getting a little bit itch for technical side because I saw the power yeah. behind behind programming. Uh, so I, I learned, I taught myself how to program, and that brought me into a lot of interactive experiences. Yeah. Right. And then once I was able to do that, someone said, "Hey, can you build uh, games?" And, and you know at the cocky point in my life, I was like, of course I can. And I found out that uh, it was a lot harder than I originally thought and wish I had spent a lot more time on math than I originally done. Said we uh, made some great experience, side-scroller side experiences, and that's what got me to work for EA Games originally in, in that time frame. And, uh, and then it just kind of snowballed from there. And what are some games you worked on at EA? Uh, Madden, uh, NCAA, well, I NASCAR, think, I think we've heard Tiger of those. Woods. Um, and but that brought you into the whole Sony uh, ecology. Of, of course. I mean, these were these were games uh, that were on every platform, right? You yeah. were able to build for um, Sony, uh, you know, Xbox, uh, PlayStation One, PlayStation Two, PlayStation Three. And so on. I was talking to a designer who said that we're uh, this is the stuff we've always dreamed of, the tools that we yeah. always dreamed we'd have. Now we have them. Yeah, I think I think right now is the time where technology is actually catching up. The hardware is actually catching up to our our aspirations. We've all always wanted to do this right I mean it's like having a time machine of your own that's pretty cool yeah. I mean what you're doing right now is it's it's really cool and it, but it's it's one of those experiences that that if if you if you had anything and you could build any game you want I mean this is the game we wanted to build yeah it's it's got all the things ticked off all the boxes from when we were kids it's got some Zelda ex uh, play patterns, right? I mean, that you can explore and you so, can... So a lot of it's about exploration. You'll go out there. What we want to spend a lot of time building environments that are so immersive that you'd want to go out there and explore them. And while you do this, you find and unlock things. And as you go, and through, it'll unlock a bigger experience in the, uh, in the overall gameplay. You were just, but you were just saying, they, they don't want my job. Right. What, do you, what did you mean by that? <laughs> Well, you know, it's it's interesting. That, you know, I I talk. I always talk. To, I talk to lots of schools. To be fair, you know, like usually, you know, young, you know, the middle school years. Yeah. Because they all want to be game guys. They want to, they want to build games. In all reality, it's software development, right? Yeah. And they ask me. They always say, "Well, how do you get into this? What do you do?" And I tell them, "Do math." And they're like, "Oh, <laughs> that's a buzzkill." Right. right. <laughs> But it's reality. I mean, even from the artistic perspective, I mean, we spend half of our time optimizing and, and checking performance, and that's even from art. From the artists, have to figure out the math, you know, in order to be able to do this properly. Well, to be fair, what tools do you use? I mean, could you do this in Unity, or is there? A, so we, of course, we use the Cry Engine, right? That's our engine from the company that I work at. And but yes, it could be done in Unity. It could be done in Unreal. There's any of the engines out there. You can you can author a game under any of those. But that's it. We use the CryEngine because we think it's the most powerful and the best rendering engine. One bit of advice would be to learn one of these engines and really master it. Sure. Is that good? It depends. Yeah, absolutely. If you, if you, it depends on what your your discipline or your goal is. If you want to do programming, um, there's usually a specific area or a specialty. You know, like I'm interested in artificial intelligence or I'm interested in graphic. You know, and once you learn how 
to develop in the in you know the programming for that, then you can actually take it and apply it to any engine. Can you make good money in this business? Absolutely, absolutely. There's plenty of guys out there that um, I'm sure make a lot more money than I do. <laughs> Are you happy with what your career is taking you? Or Are you kidding? I build games. I'm, I'm a full-grown adult, and I get to build games. <laughs> At the end of the day, I go, wow, I built that. Right? Well, let's talk about that. You're, this is coming in October. Yeah, this will be a launch title, um, and we're excited about it. I think it's going to be one of the unique offerings out there in VR. And your hope is that you're going to bring millions of people into the world of Robinson. Sure, and sure. Uh, I, we, we believe in the IP. We think it's super strong. It's, there's, it's a unique uh, kind of IP out there. And, and if we can, we're going to deliver something that lots and lots and lots of people will play. And you said it's a, cry, it's a shout out to Robinson Crusoe. Yeah. So in other words, uh, the, the storyline is similar to Robinson Crusoe. A boy ship, is shipwrecked on an alien planet and he has to explore to survive. And then all the way through it, as he unlocks and finds things, it unlocks the overall um, story. Is there a girl in involved? Well, I can't say that. I can't tell you. There's a little <laughs> piece of this. Right now, it's just a boy, a dinosaur, and a robot. And uh, did, is the goal to get off the planet and survive or just to survive? Well, his goal is that he's shipwrecked there, so he's hoping that he finds other people from his ship that went down. Okay. So he's, 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 he's in hope of finding someone else, and maybe he's eventually getting off there. Might planet. there be a segue to this? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. But I can't say, you know, specific of course. Well, we're really sort of entering a whole new thing. Both of us have some gray hair. Mm. Uh, we've seen a lot of technology. Um, and I think we're both very fortunate to be around in 2016 where we can actually do this kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, would you agree? Absolutely. I can't imagine doing anything else. You know, I, I, I for me, it's been uh, a passion all my life, right? Uh, you name the kind of experience and I've kind of gone that route. But building games always gave me something to feel young about, right? Something to... And so I love that. So and I, I love tech. There's always, there's always that... There's always something to do, right? I mean, you can't give up on tech because it's, it's, it grows every year, you know? It's like, but you got to admit, there are moments when you are up against bugs, up against amazingly tough deadlines right. budgets are huge I right. mean if you're gonna get good voice talent yeah, sure. or all these things that you have to juggle it's really sort of a liberal arts thing I mean you have to be yeah, yeah. is it fair to say you're, you have to be good with people uh, of course I mean I think that I think overall it's not you know like when you get you can specialize when you start out but I'm a generalist now I mean my job is to make sure that everything works and and we're you know, mainly make sure that that product reaches the quality bars that you want to hit, and that requires me to talk to to work with the business side as well as the programming side, the artist and the and, and the game player. You know, uh, as well as media and marketing. So yeah, I've become quite a generalist. Now. Right now, you're doing marketing. Yeah, because a lot of these guys, when I walk up and do demos, uh, they're PR people that I talk to. Yeah. So that's why when I can talk to an executive producer I'm very excited well it's exciting for me because I mean I love the game right and I, I, just being able to explain about my baby or, or the, you know I, I have to give a shout out to my team because obviously they've done a lot of amazing things but I mean this is this is something I love so I, I have no problem talking about it ever so are you in Berlin or it's, no we're in Frankfurt, uh, Frankfurt. That's, where, that's where the so Crytek is a, is a pretty large company it has about seven studios and we're in the the headquarters in Frankfurt Okay. When do you go back? Um, sur this is Surgical Strike. I'm in today, tomorrow I'm out. I'm glad I caught you. Cool. Thank you very it. much. All right. Take care.